9.3 practice problems. The chemical equation above represents an exothermic reaction between methane and oxygen. Which of the following helps to explain why the reaction is thermodynamically favored with a delta G less than zero at 2000 Kelvin and one atmosphere? So we can see the delta H and the delta S, they are both negative. But we know that uh, the equation is delta G is going to be um, equal to that of delta H minus the temperature multiplied by our um, uh, delta S. Our delta S is um, in a different unit here. It is in joules, so we do need to pay attention to that. So we have our delta H as negative 803, and this is kilojoules, so that is effectively 1,000 joules per mole. And then minus the uh, Kelvin 2,000 times our uh, delta S, which is negative 5, gives me a negative 10,000 joules per mole once the Kelvin's cancel. And uh, we have 803,000 minus 10,000, so that uh, is still very much in the negative. And so um, we are going to say that uh, it is definitely still positive. Looking at our answer choices, we have answer choice A that says the total number of gaseous product molecules is less than the total number of gaseous reactant molecules, thus delta S is less than zero. Um, the number of gaseous molecules are the same on both sides. The total number of gaseous products is greater than the total number of gaseous reactants, thus delta S is greater than zero. Um, again, they are the same on both sides. Also, we have the delta S uh, present, so we can see that it's definitely not greater than zero. The amount of energy released when the product bonds uh, form is much less than the amount of energy needed to break the reactant bonds. Uh, that is going to be the opposite of the truth, which is going to be option D. The amount of energy released when the product bonds form is much greater than the amount of energy needed to break the reactant bonds. This is uh, describing a favorable thing uh, that is definitely going to happen, is when we have um, overall the amount of energy required to break something being uh, lower than what is required to build. Oxidation of iron is represented by the chemical equation above. Which of the following correctly explains whether or not the reaction is thermodynamically favorable? So we can see that our delta H is going to be uh, negative and is large. And all of our answer choices state that. Um, and so we're just gonna figure out if this is favorable in terms of delta S. Um, we are going from a, a grand total of seven molecules to two, and we are going from a solid and gas just to a solid. So this is increasing the overall um, order of the system, which means that um, uh, the order is uh, increasing, so we're going to be decreasing the overall amount of enthalpy, which means we can eliminate any answer choice that says that our enthalpy, or sorry, entropy is um, increasing, is greater than zero, because we know that since we are going from solid and gas to just solid, we are decreasing the disorder, therefore um, we are decreasing entropy. Um, so we can go ahead and eliminate those. Uh, next up, we can go ahead and look at the differences between these two uh, answer choices. So A states that there are more particles, including particles in the gaseous state, in the reactants and in the products. Uh, thus, delta S of the reaction is less than zero. Those are the same sentence. Uh, because delta H is large and negative, the reaction will be thermodynamically favorable at low temperatures. And the difference here is favorable at any temperature. So we need um, it to be at low temperatures when our delta H and our delta S are both negative. Uh, we need uh, low temperatures in order for it to be thermodynamically favorable. So option choice A is going to be our best choice. 
the formation of um, uh, hydrochloric acid gas from its atoms is represented in the equation above. Which of the following best explains why the reaction is thermodynamically favored? So we are going from uh, two um, gaseous molecules to just one here. And so we are uh, decreasing the entropy. Um, so entropy is not going to be the thing that is, is helping us out here. But we do know that um, overall we want this to be thermodynamically favorable. We are asked to describe why it is thermodynamically favorable. And so that means that our delta G does need to be negative. Our delta G does need to be less than zero. So A and B can go ahead and be eliminated. And then um, we know that uh, our entropy is decreasing. Uh, and so we can look between these two and see which matches best. So C says that delta G is less than zero uh, because although the energy is absorbed as a bond between H and Cl atoms form, entropy increases. We know that that is not true. Um, we are decreasing entropy because we are decreasing the overall number of gaseous molecules. Option D says that delta G is less than zero because although the entropy decreases, this is good, um, that is a correct statement, so that's looking good for us. Uh, because the number of gaseous product particles is less than the number of gaseous reactant particles, the energy released as the bond becomes, um, as uh, released as a bond between H and Cl of the atoms forms. So again, um, we eliminated a and B because delta G was positive and therefore not thermodynamically favorable, which is what we were asked to explain. We eliminated C because it told us that entropy was increasing and it was not increasing because we were going from two molecules to one molecule. That left us with answer choice D, which explains that even though entropy is uh, decreasing, we are still releasing a lot of energy as we uh, form those new molecules. The reaction represented above goes essentially to completion. The reaction takes place in a rigid insulated vessel that is at uh, that is initially at 600 Kelvin. What could be inferred about the delta S of the reaction for um, uh, the reaction at 600 Kelvin? So we know that um, this essentially goes to completion, which means that this is a favorable reaction, which means that delta G must be negative. So I can go ahead and eliminate option D because it states that delta G is um, positive. I can also eliminate um, or, sorry, nope. A is talking about uh, delta S, my apologies. I thought I was talking about delta G for a second. Okay, um, but we can go ahead and eliminate option choice uh, D because uh, delta G must be negative. Um, in order for uh, the overall reaction to be uh, favored and for delta G to be uh, less than zero, we need a positive uh, delta S uh, to happen, since we know that our overall equation is delta G is equal to delta H minus the temperature times delta S. So we need this to be rather large um, so that we can overall cancel out this positive delta H here. So we are going to go ahead and eliminate B because if I had a negative delta S, then the negative times the negative would give me a positive and that would give me an overall net of a positive delta G, which is not what I want. Um, and we know that it goes to completion, so that means that it is favorable. So option A says that it must be positive since the reaction is thermodynamically unfavorable. Uh, since it goes to completion, it's going to be favorable. So option choice A is not going to be a good option choice. And then option choice C says it must be positive since delta G is negative and delta H is positive. Uh, that is going to be correct. Since this H is positive and I need this to be negative, this has to also be positive so that it can be a very large number to go ahead and get rid of my negative uh, 91 kilojoules to give me a negative delta G. The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is represented by the equation above. 
Uh, the reaction is thermodynamically favorable. The signs of delta G and delta S for the reaction are which of the following? So since we are thermodynamically favorable, we can go ahead and eliminate option choices A and C, since option choices A and C have delta G as being positive and therefore uh, thermodynamically unfavorable. If I want my delta G to be uh, negative and I am going to uh, have this be my uh, delta H. Um, I'm going to overall look for my entropy to be increasing. We can also see that we go from an aqueous uh, two molecules to three molecules and we go from aqueous to liquid and gas. We are increasing our overall disorder of the system. We are increasing the entropy and so answer choice B is going to be my best answer choice. The elements potassium and chlorine react directly to form the compound uh, potassium chloride according to the equation above. It is observed that the reaction producing potassium chloride from its elements goes essentially to completion. Which of the following is true as a true statement about the thermodynamic favorability of this reaction? Since it goes to completion, it is going to be uh, favorable. So we can go ahead and eliminate anything that is uh, stating that it's gonna be unfavorable. And then I can see that um, I am going from solid and gas to just a solid. So I am decreasing my entropy. Um, and so my enthalpy must be the thing that is driving this reaction forward. So option choice A, the reaction is favorable and driven by the enthalpy change alone um, or only because I am, again, decreasing my disorder of the system, decreasing my entropy. When water is added to a mixture, of uh, uh, sodium oxide and sulfur, a redox reaction occurs, the rep uh, represented by the equation below. Which of the following statements about the thermodynamic favorability of the reaction at 298 Kelvin is correct? So um, we are looking here, we see that we have a negative delta H and a negative uh, delta S. And so I need um, the overall um, system to be at a relatively low temperature in order for this to be favorable. I can go ahead and find that out with the equation delta G is equal to delta H minus T times my delta S. My delta H is going to be negative 610 kilojoules per mole and my delta S is in joules. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this to joules per mole and then minus my temperature, that 298 Kelvin, times the negative 7.3 joules uh, per mole. Kelvin cancels out. So 298 times 7.3 gives me 2175.4, um, and that is minus 610,000. So that is going to give me an overall delta G that is less than zero, that is negative. And so I'm gonna say that this is in fact um, favorable because my delta G is negative and my uh, overall reaction is going to be driven by my uh, delta H as I am not increasing my overall disorder of the system. And so option choice C, it is thermodynamically favorable driven by delta H only is going to be my best answer choice. When solid ammonium chloride is added to water at 25 degrees Celsius, it dissolves and the temperature of the solution decreases. Which of the following is true for the values for delta H and delta S for this dissolving process? So since um, we are uh, experiencing an overall decrease in temperature. This is an endothermic process. And so my delta H should be positive. So I can go ahead and eliminate anything that is um, uh, uh, saying that my delta H is negative. And then I just need to deal with my delta S. My delta S, um, we are increasing disorder because we are going from a single molecule here to it breaking into two um, ions there. So my delta S should also be positive. So my answer choice is gonna be answer choice A. 
The equation above represents the decomposition for the compound X uh, y sub 2. The diagram below shows the reaction profiles, path 1 and path 2, for the decomposition. The reaction is thermodynamically favorable under standard conditions at 298 Kelvin. Therefore, the value of delta S for the reaction must be. So I can see that um, overall my uh, delta H is increasing. So that means that I have a positive uh, delta H, which means that um, if I want this to be favorable, if I want my delta G to be uh, negative, I need my uh, delta S to be a lot larger than my delta H. So that would be answer choice C. Which of the following reactions is not thermodynamically favored at low temperatures, but becomes favors, favored as temperature increases? So it is favored when temperature is increased when I have um, a positive delta H and a positive uh, delta S. So I am just going to look for when I have both positive uh, delta H and delta S for high temperature, and that would be option choice B. Um, that is the only one where we have both positive. Everything else has a mix of positive and negative, and so is eliminated. Uh, for the reaction represented opposite at 25 degrees Celsius, what are the signs for delta H, delta S, and delta G? So I can see that I am going from uh, three molecules to two. They are still remaining as gases, but I am going to be decreasing the overall disorder of the system, and therefore I can go ahead and eliminate anything where my delta S is positive uh, because I am decreasing my um, entropy. Now, um, I am now looking at um, the uh, system for my uh, delta H and my delta G. I am breaking uh, my H molecule part, my O molecule part, and forming a single uh, H2O. Uh, now, because the uh, breaking of these bonds and the formation of the water molecule is going to be a favored process and is going to spontaneously occur, um, and we are overall releasing energy. This is an exothermic process. Um, we are going to have a delta H that is also negative. And since we know that this is uh, spontaneous as well, um, we know that delta G must also be negative. So that would leave me with answer choice D as my best and only answer choice.